Cyclone Bilal cleanup begins and Cyclone Angrek forms further east in the Indian Ocean. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for January 16th. So we now have two storms active, Bilal of course weakening gradually as it starts to move away from the Mascarene Islands and newly formed tropical storm Angrek which was named by the Indonesian authorities as it was just about still in their area of responsibility. You don't hear about that very often, we usually look at the Australian naming list uh, but they do have their zone there and it is Angrek and not Kiralee. 136 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins and there's nothing active to look at here right now. A frontal system moving into the west coast of Africa and also some activity across the United States as well with one or two tornado uh, warnings that were active earlier in Florida. 119 days until hurricane season in the eastern Pacific and things are rather quiet here as well. A little bit of activity down in the doldrums but generally very quiet indeed. Hawaii got clear skies all round and a little bit of cloudiness further north. In the western Pacific, the Philippines getting a little bit of cloud cover right now as well as some of the Micronesian islands and also for parts of the Malay Peninsula and Sumatra, Indonesia. North Indian Ocean is quiet right now as well. So here's where the, all, all the activity is. Cyclone Angrek is still just in the Australian region, not far from it. And those two invests that we're giving now both 60% chances, a cat and mouse game around Australia for the next couple of weeks by the looks of things on model runs with various different things trying to form. And Cyclone Bilal, of course, after passing very close and possibly making landfall on Reunion uh, yesterday, um, it was Category 2 at that point. It's now weakened a little bit to Category 1 um, and not looking quite so good. Let's take a look at it then. There is still a red alert warning for Reunion and a Class 4 warning was en it ended up being issued in Mauritius. Um, I think they were caught off guard if I'm being quite honest. 171 kilometers from Mauritius, 242 from La Union, 603 from Rodrigues, 2562 from Isle Amsterdam and 2765 from the Crozet Islands. That's the only things ahead of the storm right now. So it made a very close pass, if not a landfall, on the northeastern tip of Reunion. Um, and I remember, if, that, if I remember correctly, that was probably at around um, 11 a.m. local time. Now here it is uh, on satellite imagery right now and you can see it's still blowing up and throwing up lots of convection around itself right now but it is still a heavily impacted storm by wind shear which is making it struggle right now. This is the Australian region, Angrek on the left hand side in the distance there but look at that enormous cyclonic structure there over the northern part of Australia almost exclusively over the northern territory. You could say that's a tropical cyclone but they'll never give it because it is of course well inland and doesn't have very strong winds. Now here is Bilal moving southeasterly still at this point on that trajectory um, and it's pretty much well it's not a foregone conclusion actually I was just about to say it might be but it will eventually curve northwards we think later on and the forecast remains somewhat uncertain whether it survives or not but it's surely going to weaken quite a bit along the way. Radar imagery and you can see it's on the tail end of the storm now for the islands so it will probably still be quite windy at times uh, but most of the worst impacts of the storm are long gone. And this is Angrek, uh, we're estimating winds of 50 miles per hour on this one right now. And you can see quite a bit of wind, uh, well yeah, wind shear, but cloud tops blowing up there as well. Enormous amounts of wind shear coming from the east there, you can quite clearly see with the stark gradient between those cloud tops. And this is the area of interest over Australia. Is it a tropical cyclone? Maybe, maybe not. Does it have enough convection? No, it doesn't. Does it have very strong winds? No, not really. 35 mile per hour winds and that's offshore. This is radar imagery showing what it's looking like inland. Certainly could be a flooding issue, especially on that western band. Sea surface temperatures right now are looking decent across the eastern Pacific in one or two spots still to the south of Mexico, but the rest of the basin is of course subdued in the winter period. 
as is the case in the Atlantic. Very cold sea surface temperatures to the north now, but still holding warm in the Caribbean, not that anything's going to form. In the western Pacific, January storms aren't unheard of at all. Uh, we could still see one. Uh, still, sea surface temperatures looking quite good there, from Guam down to Palau and on towards the Philippines, 30 degrees even in one or two spots. North Indian Ocean still has some good spots as well, the same places we've discussed in previous updates, mainly in the Eastern Arabian Sea. But let's take a look at the Southern Hemisphere then, where it's more important. Uh, Bilal is over temperatures of around 27 degrees Celsius right now. The further north it tracks relative to itself, uh, the better it will be for sea surface temperatures. And for the other areas of interest, extremely warm sea surface temperatures all along the coast of Australia. And for Angrek right now, it's around 29 degrees Celsius. Coral Sea looking good as well, extending quite a bit down south too. Around Fiji and uh, Vanuatu, temperatures pushing close to 29 degrees Celsius and even warmer in those uh, lower latitudes and a warm pool just off the coast of New Caledonia as well. So let's take a look at the anomalies. It's still well above average for a large part of the southwest Indian Ocean east of the Mascarene Islands. So if uh, Bilal goes there, then it's uh, going to have a better chance. Western Pacific, only a little bit above average, around 2 degrees in a few spots. And in the eastern part of the Pacific, the El Nino effect is still alive and well. Coral Sea is well above average for quite a few areas there, so storms may well take advantage of that. Oceanic heat content looks like this and you can see the South Pacific looking pretty decent in the Coral Sea, a few spots there as well, and also to the west of uh, Samoa and north of Fiji. Looking at the uh, North Pacific, uh, quite a line dividing the warm stuff to the uh, much cooler stuff in terms of oceanic heat content, but around Guam there's still a little area there of uh, relatively high amounts. So let's check the GFS computer model right now and this is what we're expecting for Cyclone Bilal now on the latest forecast. So moving easterly and then still we expect it to stall south of Rodrigues for a time and then eventually it's starting to move towards the west, uh, becomes probably a remnant low by that point. Um, but still big question marks on whether that happens or not. I've just circled Rodrigues, uh, it gets close to tropical storm force winds if not receiving them for a short time, uh, but this storm is, we think, pretty much done, but we'll have to come back to it. Now here is Angrek, uh, first moving easterly and then turning south and then southwest and it does look like it could become a, a hurricane equivalent cyclone within that next five day period and then it too has some weak steering and stalls quite a bit in that area. The only landmass in the area is the Cocos Keeling Islands which I've circled and they may well get tropical storm force winds. Um, the Bureau of Meteorology have issued a cyclone watch for, the, for that area. Australia itself then, you can see what's happening here. In Northern Territory, that big cyclonic disturbance and in the Coral Sea, that potential storm forming. Well, what happens of it in the next five days? The Coral Sea looking decent with that potential cyclone, even getting towards hurricane strength at the end of that five day period. And the other system in the Northern Territory uh, really not getting any further, but still a very marked uh, large area of low pressure, which will continue to pump that rainfall. As we will demonstrate, here is the rainfall estimates for the next seven days and we are still very concerned about these areas in particular. Northern Territory and the Cape York Peninsula where we are expecting to see fairly high amounts of rain which could exceed 300 millimeters in quite a few spots. Now towards day seven there are new indications showing uh, substantial rainfall off the coast there of Western, again towards Western Australia, 30 inches in one spot there, that's uh, 750 millimeters, and also in a few areas along the coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. So question marks about that one at the moment, but certainly those interior areas of 400 millimeters in some places, that appears to be fairly set in stone. So keep watching for the, the coastal areas there, but the inland areas uh, are more problematic as to right now. Well, in the longer range, day 5 to 10, watch closely what happens. The remnants of Bilal move through the Masserine Islands, and then that's a new tropical cyclone forming over Rodrigues, pretty much, becoming a very large tropical storm. Doesn't strengthen that much until it gets to those lower latitudes. So that is not quite a continuation of Bilal. It's actually a new storm that forms there, enormous in size, 
possibly giving Tropical Storm Force winds to Mauritius once again, and then moving southwards, that's next week, so we're not sure what will happen with that one yet. Australian region, GFS goes all out with two tropical cyclones forming simultaneously there, one in the Gulf and one off the Western Australian coast, and they both move towards the southwest. Meanwhile, the Coral Sea system also takes aim for the east coast of Queensland, and so it's going to be an extremely hectic period if this scenario was to occur, with three simultaneous cyclones impacting Australian coastlines. Still a long way and a lot of margin for error for a complex scenario like that. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual products as well as our full season individual storm animations um, as well as our uh, still waiting for Hone t-shirts which are still very much available and we can't get Hone fast enough. Uh-oh, the Silly Range is throwing up a Western Pacific storm, surprisingly. Uh, and there it is, a tropical storm that runs up the coast of the Philippines along the eastern islands there and stalls for a little bit just off Luzon before dying off, we expect, by the time we get to the end of that period. This is day 10 to 16, so we can't put really any confidence in this yet. Uh, but for Philippine eyes watching, just a little thought that this could be a scenario further down the line late next week. Meanwhile in the southwest Indian Ocean something even more dramatic could be on the way in the late part of the model run. It is silly range so once again don't panic on this but an extraordinarily powerful storm forming there and getting very close to Reunion Island once again delivering stronger winds up to and above 200 kilometers per hour there along the western coast of Reunion but that is right at the end of the month we're still quite far away from that yet that's day 15 so certainly no panic stations yet but that is one possible scenario as for Australia, well this cyclone, does it make landfall there? No, does it? Bugger hell. It moves off towards the northeast and uh, it strengthens and it's another erratic track. A one that moves along the coast of New Caledonia as a substantial hurricane equivalent storm. Category 3 at times there on the Sapphire Simpson scale. And then it swivels off towards the southeast into the uh, extratropical zones. Extremely crazy models tonight. How much is truthful? Probably not much. On this day, January 16th, 2012, we had Cyclone Dando, a subtropical storm which was reaching the coast of southern Mozambique, a very far south landfall as a matter of fact, and Force 13 covered it. It was only our sixth storm animation uh, that we produced. And there it is on the screen. We can play out the whole thing. It was so short during this on this day section. And Dando was the only thing active, making landfall on this day with winds of around 50 miles per hour. Twelve years ago, wow. Well, coming up this year in the Atlantic is Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, the first name is Aletta. And in the Central Pacific, of course, we are still waiting for Hone. If it's another year or two, it'll be half the duration of Force 13 that we've been waiting for Hone. In the Western Pacific, it's a Winiar next up. The North Indian Ocean, it's Rimal. Two storms so far this year, not counting Alvaro, as it formed just before the turn of the year. We are still code orange for Bilal, by the way. And Grek, uh, featuring in the Australian region there, even though it's on the Indonesian main naming list. The next name is Kiralee. Southwest Indian Ocean, the next name is Candice. And in the South Pacific, it will be Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.